Hello everybody. Tonight's notes are going to be a blast from the past on graphing. So we have a little bit of a review. If you notice the title of these notes, 2.2 day one notes, solving and graphing f of x equals mx plus b refresher. And it's called a refresher because this is technically not an Algebra 2 skill, but a reminder of the graphing skills you learned in Algebra 1. And just like before, we started with a skill and moved into real world applications and more higher order thinking questions, we'll be doing the same with graphing skills. But first, we need to remember how to graph. So that's what tonight's flipped video is all about. Let's get right into number one. It says directions, identify M and B and graph, then determine the domain and range. So on the board today, we were uh, working on our unit two slope notes, and we updated it with information about slope intercept form. So just in case you were not here um, today to add that to your sheet, I am going to see if I can slide this window over for a second so I can add a page. There we go. And let's take some notes on slope intercept form. If you were in class, you have this on your note sheet. But just in case, I'm going to put it right here. If you have this, you can jump ahead and get into the notes. So slope intercept form on the board, we wrote y equals mx plus b. And as a class, we remembered that m is all about the slope and b is about the y-intercept. And then we had a conversation about which piece you use first, because that was the next question someone asked, and it was a great question. So in class, we said that first we plot the y-intercept, 0, comma, b, whatever that b value is, first. And then second, we wrote use slope, which is the rate of change, change in y divided by change in x, to count your way, just want to make sure the wording is the exact same as what's on the board, to count your way to the next point. And if you need a second to write that down, go ahead and press pause, but I just wanted to remind you of what we wrote on our sheet. So now that we have this starting point, let's actually now go back to number one. It says y equals 3x plus 6. So right away I see I have y equals mx plus b. I'm going to label this m and this b. And just to make sure I'm super clear, off to the side, I'm going to write m equals 3 divided by 1, because that's what 3 would be as a fraction, and b equals 6. Our steps say that we're first going to use the y-intercept. So b equals 6 means that my line is going to cross the y-axis at 0, comma 6. And I actually circle that because it reminds me that this is the first point that I plotted. Don't make it crazy big. Um, I know my smart board marker is a little bit thicker than a pencil, so I'll try to make it a little smaller. Just to remind myself where I started. And then step two was to use the slope to count our way to the next point. To do that successfully, I highly recommend when you write m equals 3 divided by 1, remind yourself that vertical change, a positive here means that we're going to be going up 3. In the denominator, we have horizontal change, left or right. A positive 1 means right. So as soon as I see these arrows, I'm in much better shape. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to go up 3, right 1. So let's do that. From the y-intercept, up 1, 2, 3, right 1. I would like to get one more ordered pair, but I can't go up 3. So if I go back to the y-intercept, the opposite of up and right is down and left. So we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, left 1. And that's technically enough for me to get a nice line. I mean, technically I only needed two points, but we're going to always try to shoot for three for super awesomely nice lines. And I could keep going down one, two, three, left one. Um, and then we graph our line. So use a straight edge, please. No sloppy lines. If you don't have a ruler, uh, your ID makes a great straight edge. And if you don't have your ID, 
if you take a piece of paper and fold it into fours, it's a nice straight edge. A quick check that my line is accurate. I see that this is a positive slope. Positive slope should be an increasing line. And if I were to draw a little guy on this line, he is walking uphill. So I know I'm in good shape. I'm going to stick for the notes to doing the odds. So I'm going to, oh, actually, no. Wait, one, two, three. This is misnumbered. This should be four. I'm going to do numbers one and two. So number two, again, I see y equals mx plus b. So I will label this m and this is b. And I'm going to be super clear, again, for myself. And off to the side, I'm going to write m equals, what does m equal? Well, I look at this value, it says negative three-fourths. And then b equals negative one. Again, we use the y-intercept first, so I will plot my y-intercept at 0, comma, negative 1. <clears throat> Circle it to remind myself that's where I started. And now we need to use our slope to count our way to the next ordered pair. Again, in the numerator for slope, that is our vertical change. So if I see a negative 3, that means down 3. And then 4 is positive, so that's right. These arrows really help me to see what I'm going to do. So following my arrows, I'm going to put my pencil back on my y-intercept. I'm going to do what the arrows say. I'm going to count down one, two, three, and then write one, two, three, four. And I can actually do that a second time, starting here, down, one, two, three, write one, two, three, four. And I have my three points. Remember that we could also count the other way. The opposite of down and right is up and left. So if I go up, one, two, three, and now left, one, two, three, four, I can also plot points in this direction. Let's take our straight edge. Draw a nice straight line. Arrows on both ends. And before we move on, Let's now talk domain and range. Domain and range is something we had talked about at the beginning of the year in Unit 1, and it never goes away. We can talk about domain and range of any graph. Domain, as a reminder, we come in from the left and the right. So when I come in from the left, I hit an arrow. That tells me negative infinity. And I come in from the right, I hit another arrow, positive infinity. My range, I come in from the bottom and the top. Coming in from the bottom, I hit an arrow, which means down forever and ever, negative infinity. And then when I come in from the top, arrow again, positive infinity. So reminder from last unit, reminder. Linear functions. have no domain or range restriction. We will always hit arrows, top, bottom, left, right. So it's always going to be all real numbers. And, but we're going to practice because that way it really stays firm in our brain that there's no restriction here. So right away, I see this is a linear function. I come in from the left, the right, the bottom, the top, arrows everywhere with no jumps or gaps or weird anything going on in the middle that I would need to worry about. So domain and range for both, negative infinity to positive infinity. A quick check to make sure I graphed this correctly. I see that I have a negative slope, which means left to right. If I put a guy on the line, he should be walking downhill. And he is, so I know I did this right. I'm going to leave uh, numbers 3 and 4 to, uh, to you. So I'm only doing a couple more examples, and that should leave you some time to come back and try these ones on your own. Let's continue with number 5. Now we have a really important note right here that if you have a highlighter, you should highlight this. 
I'm going to circle it in yellow. You should highlight it. It says, when a linear equation is not in slope-intercept form, we must first isolate the y variable. So now we have some work to do, because if I look at numbers 5 and 6, I do not see y equals mx plus b. But that's okay, because we have awesome solving skills in our toolbox. Now, if in ninth grade you struggled with solving for y, 98% of the time it's because we weren't so good or careful at showing our work. So starting with these examples, we're going to be very clear and on the same page with how to do it. Let's get right into number five. First thing I want everybody to do is draw a line down your equal sign. Because it helps me keep clear what's on the left side of the equation and what's on the right side. Eventually, if, you are, if your accuracy is 90% or higher, and then no problem. No need to draw the line. But unless we are that awesome, which in theory with practice we will all be, line down the equal sign. If you struggle with what to solve for, please circle the Y or highlight it. This is what I'm trying to get by itself. So the first thing I ask myself is, on the side where Y is, which in this case is on the left side, is there something I could add or subtract first? And when I look, I see this negative 4X. So this I can, I can do something with. I can add 4x to both sides. I'm very clear to write plus 4x. Something I see happen a lot is people forget to write the x, and that's a problem because, let me draw a line all the way across, they'll cross this out, but what would happen if I didn't write x? I would think to myself, oh, check it out, 9 plus 4, 13. No, we cannot do that because this is not 4, it is 4x, and that means these are not like terms. So when I go to write what comes next, y is still here, equals. These aren't like terms, so I need to just write 4x plus 9. I chose to write 4x first because in y equals mx plus b, the mx term comes first. If you wrote 9 plus 4x, that's 100% correct, unless the directions say slope-intercept form, you would need to do one more step and rearrange. y is by itself, so I am done. I'm going to put that in a box so it stands out. And now we're actually right back to where we were on our first couple of examples. Let's identify m. m is 4, but I'm not going to just write 4. I'm going to write 4 divided by 1. And while I'm at it, I'm going to ask myself, what does that mean in terms of directions for counting? A positive 4 will be up 4, and then 1 will mean it's a positive 1, so write up 4, write 1. And then B is 9. We're going to plot our y-intercept first. So I'm going to go to 9 on the y-axis and plot my point. Now... As soon as I do that, I realize there's no way I can count up 4 and right 1. So I ask myself, what's the opposite of up and right? The opposite of up and right is down and left. So I'm going to go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, left 1. And I can do that again. Down, 1, 2, 3, 4, left 1. Now I can take my straight edge and graph my line. Make sure we put an arrow on both ends. Let's do a quick check. My slope is positive. If I put a guy on this line, he is walking uphill, so I'm in good shape. Let's talk about number seven next. Move around a little bit. Number seven, first step, as always, line down the equal sign. If it helps, circle very carefully or highlight the y variable. This is what I'm trying to get by itself. So I ask myself, is there something I could add or subtract? I see this positive 3x hanging out over here. 
I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Line all the way across. Negative y comes down equals, these are not like terms, and I'm going to be strategic. I'm going to write the x term first, so negative 3x plus 1. And then I asked myself, am I done? Well, I was like, oh, I'm super close, but not quite, because this, is, this y is not isolated yet. It's not completely by itself. I see this negative sign in front. I'm like, hmm, what does that mean? Well, if we're thinking hard to last year, we'll remember that this means that there's a negative 1 out front. This means, and you don't have to write this note, but if it helps, then you can write it. means negative 1y. Negative 1y means negative 1 times y. The opposite of multiplication, or the inverse operation for multiplying, is dividing. So I will divide by negative 1. If I divide this by negative 1, I'm going to show myself dividing each term on the right side also by negative 1. Keep my line going a little bit. So now I have y equals Negative divided by negative is positive. Positive 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Let's identify m, 3, divided by 1, and b is negative 1. We're going to use our y-intercept first at negative 1. Circle it so I remind myself that's where I started. And now let's count. Positive 3 means up 3. Positive 1 means right. Count up 1, 2, 3, right 1. 1, 2, 3, right 1. And I can plot my line. Quick check. Positive slope. Increasing line. I am in good shape. Last example for today is number let's see <laughs> let's do number nine line down the equal sign if it helps circle or very carefully just highlight the y variable this is the side of the equation i'm going to pay attention to first looking to get this by itself first question is there something on this side of the equation i could add or subtract i'm hoping we're all thinking to ourselves right now this negative 10 can go. I agree. So the opposite or the inverse of subtracting 10 is adding 10. So plus 10, plus 10. Line all the way across. I have 5y equals 20x plus 10. And now to finish this up, we will divide by It's very helpful to me to show myself dividing each piece by 5 because then I see y equals 20 divided by 5 is 4, 10 divided by 5 is 2. And then I'm right back to just getting my graph on the paper. So I'm going to pause there. I'm going to leave this graph for number 9 for you to do. It would be amazing if you could take a couple more minutes to try the ones on these two pages that we did not do. So that would mean going back and working on numbers 3 and 4, which is nice because these are already solved for y. And then over here, working on 6, 8, and 10. So that's 5 for you to try. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me a remind. We will start class tomorrow checking answers for those ones that I'm asking you to try. So if you give them a shot, that would be fantastic because it would give us a place to start where you are all bringing some ideas to the table on what the answers for those look like. Have a great rest of your night. Any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with me on Remind or shoot me an email. Have a great night.